So today we're going to be talking about the dorsal pons. You're very familiar with the dorsal midbrain syndrome, and you can watch that video. That's the paranoids, dorsal midbrain syndrome. This is the pons. So the pons is kind of shaped like an apple, and it's got a dorsal and a ventral, just like in the dorsal and ventral midbrain. And the part that comes to us in the pontine syndromes is usually the dorsal pons. And so as opposed to the midbrain where there's a tectum and a tegmentum and a basis, we just have the dorsal pons, the mid pons, and the ventral pons. We have medial pons and lateral pons. So in the pons, this is the horizontal gaze center. So as opposed to the midbrain where the vertical gaze center lives, this is for horizontal gaze. And it's a combination of the parapontine reticular formation and the sixth nerve nucleus and its fascicle. The sixth nerve nucleus is the final common pathway for horizontal gaze. It talks to the contralateral medial longitudinal fasciculus, and that goes upstairs to the midbrain to talk to the third nerve. And so when we want to look for horizontal gaze, for example, in this patient, we want to look to the right. We're going to have to fire the right lateral rectus muscle. That's going to be from the sixth nerve fascicle controlled by the sixth nerve nucleus to look to the right. But in the left eye, we have to fire the left medial rectus muscle at the exact same time. And that means the sixth nerve nucleus has to talk to the third nerve nucleus on the contralateral side. And the way it talks to that nucleus is via the medial longitudinal fasciculus. In the dorsal pons, we also have the seventh nerve and the seventh nerve fascicle wraps around the dorsal part of the sixth nerve nucleus. And therefore, these are going to constitute our classic dorsal pontine syndromes. So the dorsal pontine syndromes are going to be horizontal gaze with or without the seventh nerve palsy. So the first thing it could produce is it could ding out the sixth nerve nucleus. If it dings out the nucleus, we won't be able to look horizontal gaze. That will produce a right horizontal gaze palsy if the lesion is on the right side because it dings out the right sixth nerve nucleus, which means no signal to the right lateral rectus, which means no signal to the left medial rectus via the medial longitudinal fasciculus. If we get the MLF, you'll get one horizontal gaze palsy plus a half of a gaze palsy. The half of the gaze palsy is called an internuclear ophthalmoplegia because we have dinged out the medial longitudinal fasciculus, And so they have a horizontal gaze palsy plus an INO where they get an, a dissociated abducting nystagmus on gaze to the contralateral side with an adduction deficit from the medial rectus. This we call one and a half. And if you add the seventh nerve palsy because of the fascicle of seven, then you'll get a seven plus a one and a half, and that's called an eight and a half. Or you can just have a seven and uh, I and O, a seven and a half, or you could have any combination of these. Sometimes, however, we just get the MLF and the fascicle of six, but not its nucleus. That will cause a six nerve palsy with an abduction deficit plus an adduction deficit. That's a half and half. Half of a gaze palsy on one side and half of a gaze palsy on the other side. These are the dorsal pontine syndromes affecting horizontal gaze. Horizontal gaze palsy, half of a horizontal gaze palsy, one and a half, half and half, seventh nerve makes it an eight and a half, or any of the combinations of any of those numbers.